Welcome to the last video in our quadcopter building for beginners series. In this one we're going to add some FPV equipment to the model that we've already made. So this is the model that in the previous videos we've put together. So if you're finding this video and you haven't watched any of the others, then you can watch the other videos here where we take the kit that this model was built from and we go through every single individual step. The entire series is designed so that somebody that has never built a quadcopter before should be able to follow through and ultimately end up with a model that can fly. Now one of the very common things that people want to do with multi-rotors of this size is to pop on some FPV equipment and I want to cover that in this video and hopefully talk about some of the other video series that you can go and look at once you finish this series if you want to know more about how all this technology actually works. Hopefully as you've been building the series you've also been flying around and testing and improving your skills with the little Hubsan X4 that we saw at the beginning of the series. Again, these kind of multi-rotors aren't what I'd recommend for a first timer and they can be particularly dangerous if you're not sure what you're doing. So I'd always start with a smaller model and then move up to this. But flying a model like this where you're stood at the side of the field with the radio in your hand looking at it flying in front of you is called a line of sight or LOS flying. Now line of sight flying is what most pilots tended to do until a handful of years ago and then with the introduction of FPV or first person view flying it gives you the ability to fly the craft as though you were sat right at the front looking out and it gives you a live feed from a camera mounted on the model and is an amazing fun way to fly. So let's talk about the individual pieces. Now it looks quite complicated on here but this is because I've got lots of different versions of the kit so we can figure out what we're going to put on this model. Now there are as many different ways to install the FPV equipment as there are model types out there in the market. Now the way that we're going to have to think about this is if we look along our model we can actually see we have the space here, we've got loads of space for the camera so that's not going to be a problem mounting it but it's a little tight in the back here because of our big radio receiver that we have up here at the top and this is why most people use things like the smaller receivers for the Tronus radios like the X4R and the D4R2 is because they're really small and they give you a lot of room. Now I've got a little room on the bottom deck so I need to find a little transmitter and a little camera that's going to go at the front. Now in the previous couple of years things have got an awful lot easier and I tended to, when I first started to use a lot of this stuff. Now this is a Fat Shark transmitter, it's reasonably large and we have these on lots of our models. Now be aware this is a 100 milliwatt transmitter but in a lot of places 25 milliwatts is the legal maximum and if you're looking to fly your model in an official race, most race organisers won't let you fly unless you're complying with the local legislation. But, however saying that, uh, a 25 milliwatt one of these is on the back of one of my favourite quads. And this is how I mounted this one, this is a very different frame to the one we built, but it's just cable tied out here, I have a little 90 degree adapter on the end of it, and on the top of it there's my antenna. So that's one way to do it, pretty basic but works really well. Now there are also lots and lots of smaller video transmitters as well. So this does the same job as the Fat Shark, but it is a fraction of the size. And this is another one which is a very similar size to the smaller video transmitter, but this one has a remotely mounted aerial. Now this one is very similar to one that I've got on another model over here. And what I've had to do here is on the top deck, there's my video transmitter. It's actually mounted on the top deck, again, with a little 90 degree adapter. And there's my antenna sticking out the top. Little camera at the front there to get the video. So the selection of your video transmitter is really what's going to fit. Now, on the model that we have here, that we're actually building, there is this mount, and this these two mounts at the back, one is to put your power cables through and the other one is to mount your antenna onto. So if I've got a little bit of space down here that I can't get to and I have the space to mount the FPV antenna here at the back, this looks like what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use this one. It's small enough so that it'll actually fit and I'll be able to mount it down here and it'll actually fit in the frame and then with a bit of routing I can have that up through the hole 
and I can put my aerial on it. Now this one is a Hobby King device, it's actually a Quantum Q58-2. Um, this is a 40 channel version. Now you'll find on the videos that we've got, there's an entire series on both FPV and introduction to FPV. If you want to know more about how FPV works, what race band is, why there's some things are 40 channel, some things are 32 channel, what all that means, all of that stuff is actually covered in that video series. I don't intend to cover it here, but if you want to know more, that's definitely the place to go and watch a few more videos. So that's the video transmitter that I'm going to use, so that's the easy part. Um, you can even do things like this, which is uh, things that I create to go on top of planes. Now this is using another Quantum Elite product. Uh, this is one of their video transmitters and it's a little 3D printed case that I have, little camera at the front. And all you do is apply power to the side and uh, pop this on top of your plane and you have an FPV model. If you have a car or a truck or a boat or anything else, you can just pop this on the top and just by applying 12 volts to the side, then it's gonna work. So versatility is not gonna be a problem. Now the next thing we need to talk about then is the cameras. Now the cameras, there are loads and loads and loads of different types out here. Uh, most of them these days are pretty good. You tend to find that there are two basic types they're called CCD and CMOS. Most CMOS cameras run off 5 volts. And in fact, all the cameras that we have here on the desk, so we have a couple of Fat Shark ones. Uh, Fat Shark connectors tend to be kind of that little style at the back, like the little three thin connectors. Other manufacturers also do that as well. Here's a, an Isheen board camera, and that has the same connector on the back as the Fat Sharks, but more and more cameras these days are starting to ship with these servo style connectors on. So this is the camera we're actually going to use. This is a little cheap and cheerful one, uh, very basic FPV camera. Put a link in the description to both this camera and the video transmitter that we're using if you want to do exactly what we are. Um, and that again, that's got that servo cable on it. We have this little uh, CP520, a little cute little camera. Uh, this one is very small and compact and handy for places where you're a bit tight in space. But again, it's got the same servo connector. And this one here, this is a little um, Isheen 1000 TVL CCD camera thingy, uh, selectable between PAL and NTSC. And again, it's got the same servo cable. So you tend to find that they broadly fit in those two categories. Now let's talk about how we're going to physically connect this up to the model. Because if you remember, when we built the model, we added an extra JST lead that came off the power distribution board that provided 12 volts for things like FPV equipment. So we're going to use this, but before we start plugging everything together, let's quickly talk about how it all works. All the cameras that we've just looked at are going to run off 5 volts. The video transmitter is typically going to run off 12 volts. So to put this together should be very straightforward. All we're going to do is we're going to plug the video transmitter and take power from that extra little flying lead that we've already installed. And we're just going to simply plug the camera into the video transmitter because the video transmitter will provide the 5 volts that the camera needs to run and everything should be golden. So it's going to be very easy to put together. Now if you go back to the desk, this video transmitter that we're using has a connector for the camera and again you want to observe polarity, so you want to make sure that the black, red and white are the right way round. Now on this one you can probably see that the black and red are the wrong way round, which is a little bit weird. So all I'm going to do is on this little connector is I'm just going to pull the black and red wires out and all you do is you lift these little teeth that are part of the servo connector and you can draw the wires out to make sure that they match up. So I need black to black, red to red and I also need white to, well white or yellow in this case. So let me, that's going to plug in there and then the other side which magically is a JST connector is just going to plug into that extra power lead that we installed in our model. Now before we install it into the craft two things we should really do. 
Uh, I'm going to power it up to make sure it all works. It's heartbreaking if you go through all the time and trouble of putting your FPV equipment into your model, then power it up and find you've got a problem. So we're gonna test it out first. And also you never power up a video transmitter without an antenna connected because that will blow the transmission electronics. So just as a word of warning, I just get a cheap and cheerful aerial. Even one of the rubbish little whip aerials will do and just put that onto the output. And then that way, if you inadvertently power it on, you're not going to blow the electronics in here. So let me quickly change these two wires over. We'll come back, we'll power it up, and we'll make sure it works. So here we are all plugged in. I'm just running it off a little 3S battery with another little JST connector, which is what we're going to have on the model. I have my video transmitter. Uh, transmitting away, connected to the antenna, and we have our little camera plugged in. So uh, everything should be working. And here, if I just pull, pull my little ground sc screen up, there we go, I can actually see through that little camera. Now it's always worthwhile also double checking which way is up. So for my camera, um, it needs to be that way round on the model, so that's the top, so the wires come out of the bottom. So now I know that it's all working, that's great, we can talk about how we're actually going to install it onto the model. Now the first challenge is how we're going to fit the camera, because the camera, uh, again, as you saw, there are lots of different styles and sizes and shapes and all kinds of things. Now we're going to have to try and fit this camera into this hole at the front of the model. And again, we have to have the cables coming out the bottom. Now the trick that I use for mounting a lot of cameras, and again, you can go and see it in this video here where I do it with other ones as well, is um, what you need to get is a little bit of this foam board stuff. It's fantastic. It means you can pretty much mount any camera to anything. So this foam board is the kind of stuff that you've seen on things like flight tests. They make planes out of it and all kinds of stuff. This just happens to be black with a black core uh, and I use this because it's easier. What I did was I cut out a square and cut out a little indent which is exactly the same size as the camera. Then on the back I cut out a circle which is the same size as the circle on the front of the model, hot glued one to the other, and then cut a little slot in the side. And the reason for that is the idea is that I can put the cable in through the slot. I have to be a little bit gentle with this because these cameras are not designed for lots of messing about. The camera now fits in that little piece there and we'll be able to push the back part in to the hole and then that will be my camera mount and then what we're going to do is my favorite trick which uses a little hair band around the whole thing to keep it in place so that's how we're going to mount the camera to mount the video transmitter what i'm going to do with that i'll just take the antenna off and all the cables, because we'll have to route those around, is I'm going to just tape, use a little cable tie to just hold that in place at the bottom of the craft about there. And then what I'm going to do is work out how I can get this wire neat so that I can have that bit all plugged through the top and then I can affix the aerial. So what I'm going to have to do to fit all this in, I'm going to have to take the top deck off and then uh, pop the camera in and pop the video transmitter in. So let me just do that and then we'll come back and have a quick look. So the top off the model we can see what's going on a lot clearer. Here is the video transmitter just connected in that little space that I have at the back and there's even a little cable tie going through it to just help keep it in place. Now that means then we have the flying lead coming out the back that's going to connect into that hole in the top deck when we put the top deck back on. Then we have the cables coming out of the front of the video transmitter. One is the power cable and that's just plugged straight into that JST connector that we already installed so that makes that a piece of cake. Now you can see why we always install an extra JST connector because we always end up wanting power for something. And then we also have the cable here that's going to go into the back of the camera. So let's talk about how we're gonna mount the camera because here's that plate that we're going to use to actually mount it into. 
So it's as simple as this. This is the trick I always use. I'm just going to pop that through there so it fits like that. So we've uh, got it connected. And then the other trick is what you do is you get a, a hairband and then you just wrap it around the camera and around the back like that. Make sure it's all squared up. And there you have your camera mounted. It's that easy. So there isn't really any need for any complicated mounts or anything like that because it can be as easy as a bit of double sided foam and a hairband and you're good to go. And then all I need to do is plug that back into the video transmitter. And now I just need to put this all back together, tidy up these cables, maybe put a cable tie over them and then put the top back on and then we're ready for a final test. So with the top on, it starts to look a lot more like a little FPV quad. We have the camera mounted on the front using our foam board and hair band method. Uh, we have the cables kind of bunched up behind it, um, all kind of tidied away. And then we have our video transmitter at the back. And we've just screwed in that little extension cable here. Now that should mean that when we power everything up, it's going to work. The last thing of course that we need to do before we power on for the first time is install a little aerial. You never want to power this up without an antenna on. Just like we said before, it'll blow the video transmitter if it does. So there we go. That's how you install the FPV equipment onto your quadcopter. And now we have finally finished the build. In this series, we've taken a kit and built it right the way through, step by step, piece by piece. And now we have a cool little quadcopter all set up with the flight modes and everything. And we even now have FPV equipment on there so we can go out and give FPV a try. Last thing I'll say in the video is if you are interested in knowing more about the things like the flight controllers and the power of software like Clean Flight, then we do have a complete set of series on most of the common flight controllers on the channel already. So go and find those videos, go and have a look because there's an awful lot more that things like this flight controller can do than we've actually covered in this series. We can do things like add LEDs that change color and flash as you fly. You can do things like add on-screen displays which sit between the camera and video transmitter and actually put information onto the FPV image that show you details about speed, location, distance to home, or kind of that funky stuff too. There's loads of things, so do have a look in those videos. Secondly, if you are looking to transfer from line of sight to FPV flying, and again, line of sight is where it's flying around and you're looking at it, where FPV is flying as though you're looking at the camera, it can be a little bit disorientating. We do have a video in our introduction to FPV series, so I'd recommend going and watching that because that will kind of take you through the three or four things that I use with new pilots that are struggling to try and help them acclimatize to the different way of flying. So thank you for sticking with us through the entire series and all I need to do now is say goodbye and wish you happy flying. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching, please like, subscribe and happy flying.